Have you ever taken a piece of pizza fresh out of the oven and taken a bite and wondered, why does the crust not burn my mouth, but the sauce burns my mouth like crazy? Well, if you think about what's in pizza sauce, there's quite a bit of water in sauce. And it turns out that water per grit, per every gram of water has an ability to hold a high amount of heat compared to crust, bread, has a lower amount of heat that it can hold per gram, and there is a difference in temperature and the energy is trying to move. That is what we're studying in this experiment, the specific heat of water, and we're using that uh, ability to hold or transfer energy to determine the identity of an unknown metal when we put a piece of metal in a calorimeter with some water. Here are the materials that we will need to do this lab. I've got two metal samples. Don't know the identity of them yet. I've got a digital balance. I have a piece of string because my metal samples will let me put a piece of string through them. And this will become important in the procedure when these metals are placed in a sample of ice water. So this will help me pull the metal out of the ice water later on. I've got a piece of string there. I uh, have my temperature sensor, which I've already connected to SparkView. I have a calorimeter and this two foam cup system, this calorimeter allows me to record um, temperature changes within a system that will help me determine the identity of these metals ultimately after doing some math. And there's a lid for my calorimeter with a hole in it so I can measure temperature without having too much energy loss to outside of my system. I've got a graduated cylinder and some hot water in this uh, container so we want to be careful and not spill that hot water and we're quickly enough to be safe but also quickly enough to not lose too much heat from the hot water. I also have a pipette to help me out with the procedure because it turns out I've got to get the mass of uh, each of these metals and when I get the grams of the metal I need to get an equal mass of water and remember that water's density is equal to one gram per milliliter so basically if you have one gram of water that's equal to one milliliter if my metal turns out to be 50 grams, that means I need 50 milliliters of water to get 50 grams of water. Okay, so uh, we will need equal mass of water, um, of hot water, to go into the calorimeter. Um, I will take the metal that's been cooling off in my cold water and drop it into the system here and measure the change in temperature over time, ultimately to calculate the energy um, exchanged within the system. And from that, I can calculate specific heat. This lab has two parts. We're gonna begin part one. And uh, if you're doing this lab uh, along with me at home, then you definitely wanna pause the video um, after I explain what, uh, what you do for your prediction. So you open up your answer sheet and the first thing you see is what is your mixture prediction? Well, here's the scenario. Let's say that um, you got this massive metal Let's say it's about 80 grams and you stick it in some ice water and get it really cold to assuming it goes to zero degrees Celsius, 80 grams of metal at zero degrees Celsius. And then you stick it in some water in this cup and the water, you're going to have 80 grams of water, which is an equal mass at a temperature of 50 degrees Celsius. So 50 degrees Celsius water, zero degree metal, both equal mass. You combine them, what do you predict that the water temperature will go to from 50 degrees to what? That's what I want your prediction um, on your answer sheet. Go ahead and pause the video, make your prediction and press play when you're ready to move forward. Okay, uh, so uh, well, you made your prediction. Now we're going to begin part one where we just look at the change in temperature so you can evaluate uh, whether or not you were in the ballpark on that guess of what temperature would the water be when you combine those two um, samples. So uh, we're gonna begin by taking the mass of this metal sample. I'm gonna zero the balance. And I see the mass is 80.25 grams. So go to your answer sheet and write 80.25 for the metal mass. And I'm going to put the string through the hole and set this piece of metal in some ice water. This is an ice bath that, assuming it's at zero degrees Celsius, it has to sit in there for a little bit to get down to zero degrees. 
but we're going to assume eventually its initial temperature will go down to zero. So we can enter in table one for the metal, the initial temperature of that piece of metal will be zero degrees Celsius. In the meantime, we have to get an equal mass of water. So um, I've got a graduated cylinder here and the best I can read is to one tenth place. So I'm gonna try and get either 80.2 or 80.3 milliliters of water. And I can convert that straight to mass because the density of water is one gram per milliliter. So if I've got 80.2 milliliters, I've got 80.2 grams of water. All right, I've got some um, hot water in here and I'm gonna to try to get as close to 80.2 or 80.3 as I can get. And there it goes. And I brought a pipette with me so that I could get a better volume measurement. Okay. I've got, uh, I better write that mass here, 80.2 for the mass and I'm going to start collecting data on SparkView, put the temperature sensor in the calorimeter and dump that hot water in there. And now I'm looking for the maximum temperature, let it get uh, the high temperature. This water's already cooling off, it's going to try and cool down to get to equilibrium with the air. So I'm watching it on the graph and on the digital display to see when it starts declining or when it equalizes. It looks like it's already there. 52.9 is probably the warmest it'll get. So now I'm going to take the metal sample and drop it in the 52.7 degrees Celsius water. And I also want to put a lid on the system to make sure I'm getting the change in temperature uh, as close as I can between the metal and the water. And we don't want to lose that heat to the surroundings, so I'm trying to keep it within the system as best we can. You can see that you can definitely tell where I touched the metal there with the temperature sensor, it dropped a little bit. And we're aiming to get the temperature of the water. And I'm gonna keep moving it to try and get it to mix it pretty well. What I'm looking for is for that temperature to go flat. The change in temperature is slow down, almost look flat. And I would call that the final temperature uh, where the temperature of the, of the metal went up and the temperature of the water went down and they're kind of meeting one another where they're losing and gaining equal amounts of energy. That's equilibrium I'm looking for. And when I look at the graph, I look to see if there's much more change in temperature. And I can see it looks like it's fairly flat and not changing or if it is changing, not changing much, and maybe just changing due to loss. So I think I can hit stop here. And now I've got that final temperature at um, 44 degrees. Uh, I want to show you a tool, some tools in SparkView you can use to find those data points that we started with, like what was the temperature at when we started, and where is the temperature when we finished? Well, the temperature where we finished is still on the SparkView display. It's 44.0 degrees Celsius. So we can put for water in table one, our final temperature was 44.0. We can say the same for the metal because we assume that the water and metal have exchanged energy and have come to equilibrium or the same temperature. So that's 44.0. And mixed, so my whole system also has that temperature at equilibrium of 44.0. Now, um, to look back at the initial temperature of water, we can use SparkView tools. So um, we got a maximum, but then the, the, the water cooled down a little bit right before I put in the metal, and you can see on the graph about where I dropped in the metal. So we're going to use the coordinate tool. I just open the tools on the bottom of the graph, and you want to watch this because you're going to have to do this on the next run. I'm going to get out the coordinate tool, and it drops um, a box on my graph that I can move. There's a little gray box that I can click and hold and drag to the data point that looks like right before I dropped in the metal. So let me back up 52.7. It was 52.8, but then it got a little cooler to 52.7. And that's right when I dropped in that metal. Yeah, and it started cool down, cooling down faster. So we're going to use 52.7 as the initial temperature of the water right before I put in the metal. 
so 52.7 for water's initial temperature. Okay, and then you have to calculate the change in temperature in table one using the formula there in the table, delta T equals TF minus TI. Final temperature minus initial temperature in that order. So you're going to take 44 minus zero and get an answer for metal. For water, you're going to take 44 minus 52.7, you're going to get an answer. If you get a negative, you've got to keep that negative with your answer, it's important. And it says something about energy. It says, if you have a negative delta T, you've lost energy or released energy. If you have a positive delta T, you've gained energy or absorbed energy. So do be consistent. One of those numbers should be negative and one should be positive. Okay, um, then you're gonna go through and you should have enough data to figure out how well you did on your prediction because we've got the same scenario here. We've got about 80 grams of water and about 80 grams of metal. We've combined them the metal was at zero, the water was 50 degrees-ish. And when we combine them, we got a new temperature. Now um, you can answer the questions um, and describe how close you were or not on your prediction and also answer the other questions regarding energy exchange in the system. And then we're ready to move on to part two. So I'm gonna move my answer sheet on to part two and we'll be filling out table two with the data we collect now. Now in the directions, it would tell you to um, rinse your calorimeter, dry it off completely, but I'm cheating and getting a new one that's already dry and back at room temperature. And I'm drying off my temperature sensor and make sure there's no water, excess water stuck to it. We're going to repeat the procedure, but with a new sample, and you have to calculate the specific heat of this unknown metal based on the energy exchange in water. We can do that with some calculations that we'll talk about in the analysis. So we have a similar procedure. We're going to get the mass of the metal and enter it in table two. This metal is exactly 80.00 grams. So that is what I'm putting in table two for the metal mass. And now it's time to put it in the cold water. Get the string through there, make it easy to retrieve later. Okay, and that's sitting in there getting cooler and it will ultimately get to, we're gonna assume zero degrees Celsius so we can fill that out in our table. The initial temperature of the metal will be zero degrees Celsius. And we're gonna do the same procedure, means we're gonna get exactly 80.0 grams of water. And I'm gonna empty out this pipette to make sure that if I grab any water to add, it's only warm water that ends up in that graduated cylinder. Okay, and I think I'm ready to measure my water. I'm trying to get to 80. Okay, and I need to remove some water. All right, and I'm exactly 80.0 on my water mass. And I can start collecting data in SparkView so we can get that starting temperature of the water. I missed a couple drops there. I want to make sure I get them all in there. Okay, and I will need this calorimeter lid while I'm waiting for this temperature to catch up to the temperature sensor, 53.2. That's looking like it might be my starting temperature. And now, Going to get that unknown metal, which you have to figure out what it is. And deposit that in the cup and seal the system while collecting data and it's dropping. We are doing the same thing here. We're waiting for the system to come to equilibrium. The cold metal sample will warm up and the warm water will cool down. And eventually they'll meet at some point at equilibrium. And keep that water moving, to distribute the energy equally so that I get an accurate reading. I'm also using the graph to determine when the temperature change is slowed its rate enough to call the final temperature 
still changing. It's slower. And let's say we're pretty close. And I'm going to call that the final temperature. So uh, use the uh, tool I showed you in SparkView to get the starting temperature for this run. Now, if you need to go back and do any more analysis on either run one or run two, you've got to make sure that in your legend, the red box is around the run that you are wanting to analyze. So if you need to do some analysis on run one, make sure you click that box and put the red box on run one. Same goes for run two. When you look at the um, digits display, it will show the last recorded data point, so it should show you the final temperature. If you need to go back to run one, you simply click where it says run two and select run one to get back there and toggle back and forth between the runs. Now we have enough information to continue with the analysis. Okay, now we're ready to take your mass and temperature data and turn it into uh, or calculate uh, energy and ultimately specific heat of that unknown metal sample. Uh, so uh, let's begin with looking at table two. Uh, the first thing uh, that you might, uh, you should have everything filled out up to um, change in temperature. So you're going to have to find specific heat and Q for metal and water. Let's do the water value first because um, that's the first thing you're asked to analyze. You're going to look for the heat energy equation where it says the Q of water is equal to the mass of water times the specific heat of water times the temperature of water as opposed to metal. So that means when solving for Q of water, use all the values in the water row in table two. Don't use any of the metal values at all. So for finding Q, you're going to get water mass times the specific heat of water. It tells you right here specific heat of water is 4.18. It tells you to put it in the table and also to drop it into that water calculation there. Now, uh, the change in temperature of water, again, that's something you would have calculated from your table. And remember, if you have any uh, negative signs to carry them and whatever calculations you're doing here uh, for the remainder of this analysis. Okay, so that gives you the energy of water. You get a value and you drop that in your table and you're done with the water row. But then you've got a couple of blanks in your metal row still that you have to solve. So um, one of the hints uh, in one of the questions says, apply the law of conservation of energy to determine the heat Q of the metal sample after adding it to the hot water. You know the Q of water. You don't know the Q of metal. Or do you? <laughs> Think about what happens in the system. When water exchange its Q, it's joules, where did they go? Now think about that and think about the sign on that value um, of joules, whether it should be plus or minus when it travels somewhere else. And that should help you come up with the Q of heat. Okay, so hopefully that's enough hint to help you there. Once you've got the Q for metal, now you can finally solve the specific heat of the metal. So we're going to go to that part of the lab. It's question five that asks for the specific heat of metal. Specific heat of the metal equals the Q of the metal divided by the mass of the metal times the delta T of the metal. All of those metal values from that metal row on table one, um, should, you should calculate the specific heat from that. Um, and your unit should be joules per gram degree Celsius when you are finished with your calculation. And again, remember if you had negative signs to carry them through the calculation. Once you've got the specific heat of metal, then you can enter that in table two here. And finally, you can compare it to a set of known values for specific heat of metals. It is one of these metals listed in the table. So find the nearest value to the calculated value. And also you want to um, calculate this, the uh, percent error of that metal. So here's the equation for percent error. It's accepted value minus experimental over accepted absolute value. So in this case, if you get a negative sign, you're going to ignore it. Uh, and then multiply that by 100% to get your percentage. Remember that the accepted values, this shows up twice, the accepted value comes from this table, and the experimental value is what you calculated from your experimental data. Um, and then answer the rest of those questions in your 
your lab and as you complete your lab, think about hot pizza fresh out the oven. Either you wait for it to cool down or if you just can't wait, then use your specific heat understanding. Take that pizza pizza and turn it around to the side that it has the material with the lowest specific heat, the bread. Eat it crust first, not sauce first, because it's going to transfer less energy per gram to your mouth than the sauce end.